Well, hello everybody, how we doing? This is the random name 951 and I want to bring you a tutorial on how to connect your PS4 controller via Bluetooth to your um, Galaxy S10 Plus and this should also work on your S10 as well. Um, so you can use that PS4 controller on the Dolphin emulator as a um, external uh, physical controller. So uh, first I'm going to show you exactly what the controller looks like. This is a... Uh, Sony PS4 controller. Um, so this is a this isn't any aftermarket one. I don't know what the model number is because the sticker was peeled off, but I'm guessing most of them should work all the same. Uh, so the first thing of business is you see that PlayStation button. That's going to be your main sync button. So just in a, in, a, in a little bit, you're going to want to use that button. And first thing is first, we're going to go to our settings go to connections and then go to bluetooth and once we're in bluetooth um on that ps4 controller you're going to want to press this button press and hold for about five to six seconds um so right now i am going to press that button and hold it for about five to six seconds um you should get this pairing request pair with wireless controller press OK and now currently I'm using my directional pad to show you that I am connected with that controller so now that we're connected next we're going to go to our Dolphin emulator open that go to the top right where the three um, dots are see there's the three dots top right and we're going to go to GameCube input now from there um, depending if this so you could link multiple, I believe, multiple controllers to your phone. Um, depending how many, like, for instance, I know with the Galaxies, the, the S10s and up, you're able to connect multiple devices via Bluetooth. So I believe you could connect at least two, for sure two, maybe three, maybe four. But right now I'm just going to show you that, um, how to since we have the PS4 controller connected, I'm going to show you how to map the buttons on your controller so you can play the game. So first you're going to press on GameCube controller 1, go to emulated, and now you'll bring up a, uh, a list to, to map your buttons. So basically you can map your buttons any way you prefer. Um, I'm going to give you my setup and how, um, how to do it. So to map your buttons, we'll start with the A button. And what, what we're doing essentially, if you don't know, is um, uh, whatever button we press on the PS4 controller will register, for instance, as the A button in game of the emulator. So I'm going to be pressing the, the A button mapping on the phone first. And now it gives you the instruction to input binding. So press or move an input to bind it to A. So in this instance, I want to use the X button as my preference. So on my PS4 controller, I will press the X button. And that will bind the... Uh, that will now bind the X button as the A button when playing a uh, a GameCube game on this Dolphin emulator. Now, you, you could bind any buttons. For instance, if you want to do triangle... You see right now it says button 96 where A is. If I press triangle, now it's button 100. Now if you do that, do note that um, it doesn't automatically swap the buttons. So you can see the A button or the A input and the Y input are both button 100. Meaning when I press triangle, it's going to register the triangle button as both A and Y. Which um, could be something useful for maybe fighting games I suppose. But um, to keep this to keep this on on track, the A button is going to be the X button, and then my B button I chose to use the square button. Um, the X button I chose to use the circle button. Uh, y I chose to use triangle. And this kind of button setup is supposed to somewhat match how it would be to use a um, I guess you know, to use a GameCube controller. Um, so my Z button, I'm going to input it as R1, but you could use L1 or any other button setup you like. 
start obviously you're just going I'm, I just use the options button on the PS4 controller as my start button and then the control stick so th this might get a little tricky but it's, it's really simple so your control stick is going to be the main you know stick of movement when you're playing your uh, GameCube games so in this instance I will personally use the left analog stick as my control stick and it's really easy to map it so where it says up, it works the same way. You press on the phone and you'll just go up on the left analog stick or your right analog stick, depending on how you want to um, map the buttons. So you just tilt the uh, analog stick up. Again, I'm using the left one. So you tilt up. That registers your up button. Down. Registers the down. Uh, tilt. Left tilt. Registered left. And now right, register the right tilt. Now you can see all these are already pre-set up because I've run through this already. So I'm I'm just it it might not change at all. That's because they're already set up the way I want them to work. But I'm just showing you guys how to do it. It's more of a talk through tutorial since I don't have a camera and showing you know what I'm doing to controller. So that's why it's it's going to be a little lengthy, but um nonetheless. Moving on to the C stick. So in this case, I'm going to use my right analog stick as the C stick. So we're going to press up on the on the right analog stick. Um, tilt down. Tilt left. Tilt right. And um, now moving on to the triggers. So for me, I most comfortably feel using the L2 for the left uh, as the L button and the R2 as the right button or trigger. So we'll do that. And now the R2 for the right. And this is, you know, very simple as well. The D-pad. Um, obviously, I'm just going to use the D-pad that's on the uh, on the PS4 controller. You know, D-pad or directional pad for the full name. However you want to call it. So up, down, left, right. And as far as for the rumble, what I used was just a share button on the ps4 controller and then when you do activate that you should feel a slight rumble on your ps4 controller um kind of like the app letting you know that the rumble feature is now active on your ps4 controller <laughs> and again you could use any buttons on your um ps4 controller i think the only one you can't use is the the um the mouse pad, how you're you able to click down the mouse pad in the middle. Um, you might be able to, but I'm not going to bug with it. I would think also you could use the uh, the R3 and L3 as buttons. So let's test that. So yes, you can use R3 or L3 as button mapping options, but I'm going to change that back to X. Um, and then don't forget to on the top right, you're going to press the save icon. And now you have saved the settings. So to test the game out, we're going to go to a game. And I'm going to use Metroid Prime. And just give it a second to load. And one thing I do recommend too, is if you don't already have it installed, there is a game plugin called Game Booster that um, when you play any games um, it's going to pop up and within game booster you could install what's called game booster plus and with that you're able to install these other things such as uh, performance z and they're running in the back right now um, performance z z perf z perf is um, short for, for performance is just playing over other apps and with that that allows you to track your I'll talk about it while this is loading up. But it allows you to track your frames per second, your CPU and GPU usage, as well as your uh, temperature that your phone's running at. So right now the temperature is pretty mild. It's about standard what the phone is running at, I would suppose, which is 32 degrees Celsius, which is about, um, I would say maybe 85, maybe 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The only downside is you can't change that to Fahrenheit, you know, to, um, for at least, I guess for, uh, 
you know, because I, I, I'm not really familiar with Celsius, I probably should be, but um, you have that. It also has, you know, a color indicator letting you know, you know, yellow's moderate. Um, red would be like higher or, or, you know, hotter, obviously. And GPU usage. So right now, let's test it out. Right now, I'm using my left and left. I'm using my left analog stick, tilting to the left, tilting to the right. Uh, and do note that GameCube games, if, if you haven't played them before, um, there really is no... It's not the same as playing like standard first-person shooters. So that that C stick that's meant to be, you know, a right analog stick doesn't really take into effect as much. So so this game primar primarily um, uh, it needs you to use that left analog stick. So you can see left tilt, right tilt, up tilt, down tilt. Now I'm going to be testing my left button, my left trigger which is L1. See it activates a little crosshair so I can strafe instead of, you know, looking left or right. Now we're going to activate the uh, right trigger or R2 on our PS4 controller and that allows for a free aim in this specific, uh, specific game. And you can also, uh, you know, try using multiple buttons to make sure everything's working there. So I'm holding my L1, I'm excuse me, my L2 my R2, as well as pressing the A button, or in this case the X button on the PS4 controller. Now I'm going to test out my score button, which is a B. That allows me to jump in this game. Now, um, in this game, circle, or what would be considered, I believe, the X button, allows me to turn into a little ball. But um, in this game, I don't have that power fit, so my, my B button is not registering but you can hear there is a a little background noise letting me know that I don't have that power up yet. Triangle button also isn't working. Um, it's not that it's not working, it's just I don't have the power up um, which is missiles in this game to use. Uh, and that, let's not forget our Z button which is R1 uh, that activates the map. And also, let's try out our directional pad. So right now I have um, the D-pad. I don't think it activates anything in this game. Um, that's left on the D-pad. You can see. So that bottom left thing is would be my D-pad basically. So I don't have the other upgrades yet. Again, try with multiple games, and so far. Um, there is no input lag in the, while playing this game and as well as other games. Like see here, while playing this game my temperature is going up a little bit and that's to be expected with especially uh, a GameCube game. And uh, I would recommend if you guys haven't seen um I do have a video about the Samsung Dex Pad and Samsung Dex Station. And I'll show you guys a little video on how it runs uh, later on with playing emulators. But with those uh, little gaming um, docks or Galaxy uh, phone docks, they have built in fans what's, which could help regulate your temperature on your phone. Um, also, when playing these games, I would rec recommend taking off your cases uh, depending on what kind of environment you are, you are in. Because uh, with the uh, cases on your phone, your phone is, uh, you know, collecting and keeping heat. It's not allowing the heat to disperse from your phone, you know, thus heating up your phone. Uh, and then it can also affect your frames per second as well as uh, other stuff. Uh, as far as GameCube games, they're not, uh, at least the one I'm playing, it depends what game you're playing, they're not uh, as... I suppose not stressful, but not as um, uh, they don't put as much hard usage on the phone. Thus, you most likely you know not needing a cool cooling fan. But uh, you know, after playing this for a couple, maybe half an hour, you'll see your battery maybe take a hit or so. So, but those uh, Dex Pad Dex stations are also a charging station, as well as a um, station that allows you to connect your phone to your uh, to your preferred display such as a TV or a, a gaming monitor
Oh, one thing I did forget before um, I do forget. So when you probably if this, if this is gonna be your first time setting this up, which most likely is, um, you're gonna have all your buttons toggled, which is uh gonna show up like this. So to get rid of those buttons out of the way, so you can have a full screen, you're going to want to like partial swipe down. That'll bring up the little menu. Go to configure controls. Go to toggle controls and just put toggle all. From there, it should just remove them all. And don't worry because you could re-toggle them back on like how you saw me do just right now. It's the same way. Configure, toggle, toggle all. And so if you don't have a controller to use but you still want to play, you could then definitely put those back. But with that, now you have a uh, full screen you could use, which is nice. So yeah, a bit of a lengthy video, but I hope you guys got the gist of it, and I hope this video did help out a bit. If yeah, you guys have any uh, questions or concerns, please leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, if this video did help you, please leave a like and uh, share it to others that you know, you're know you trying to get into the emulating um, sort of scene. And uh, definitely with the S10 Plus, and most likely the S10, since I believe they use the cha same chipset. Uh, you should be getting results like this where it's uh you know near lag free in some sort of cases um depending what you know i know when i was playing the earlier part of this game there was some lag and that could be due to the settings i was using i kind of tweaked them a bit but um some games only run at 30 frames per second some only run at 60 maybe more or less depending on what game you're playing so yeah yeah, that's, that's enough for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until ne next time, take care. Peace.